It's October 22nd, 2024, and this is Sketchworks News Break. The news stops here. I'm Brian Troxel, and I just came from the county fair. I just had hand surgery a few weeks ago. I should not be doing things that require this much dexterity. Also, I lost my voter hat. Election day is two days away. If, if you're watching this today, Today being October 22nd, which I literally just announced at the top of the show. Anyway, with Election Day being so close, the two leading candidates are stepping up their campaign appearances. Vice President Kamala Harris appeared in a suburban Detroit neighborhood at a bipartisan rally with former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney to discuss how the country can advance from the rancor and the rhetoric and truly be a country by and for all Americans. Former President Donald Trump, meanwhile, picked up a shift at a Pennsylvania Mickey D's as his campaign coffers are running out of cash. Trump says the experience further inspired him to seek re-election, just so he can pardon the Hamburglar. Vice President Kamala Harris is not scheduled to have any campaign appearances with President Joe Biden before Election Day. Senior campaign managers say Biden is a liability for the Harris campaign, especially because he insists on getting to Denny's for dinner by 3.30 p.m. Elon Musk, the version of Tony Stark that your mom insists you have at home, says he'll give away $1 million every day from now until Election Day to a random registered voter who signs his petition. He says if you don't sign his petition... He'll buy your company and ruin it, just like he did with Twitter. Da -da 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 -ow. <laughs> Turning to sports, which we occasionally do on this show. Don't get cranky over there. The Southeastern Conference issued a $250,000 fine against the University of Texas because of fans who threw garbage onto the field during the Georgia Bulldogs' 30-15 win over the Longhorns. The SEC also ordered the university to find and suspend fans who threw the garbage. That sound you just heard was legions of frat bros asking, Do you know who my dad is? Saturday, former NFL coach Bill Belichick took his 24-year-old girlfriend Jordan to a Massachusetts corn maze which was shaped like Belichick. If you viewed it from above, that is. The couple would have gone Friday, but Jordan had cheerleading practice. What's it like to walk around Belichick's corn head? It's claustrophobic, it's confusing, and it will exacerbate your hay fever. Following their trip through the maze, the 72-year-old took his best gal to a soda shop for a malted before going to the drive-in and ending their day at a weenie roast. A 72-year-old dating a 24-year-old. Now that means I can date a, oh, oh, oh no, no, that, that math does not work. Just move on. If you're going on a big date, there's only one way to impress your guy or gal and ensure that you get lucky. And that's by seeing both Sketchworks Comedy live shows in November. Lame is America. A political parody of the iconic musical runs November 1st and 3rd, just in time for Election Day. And it will impress your date so much, their emotional walls will start to come down. Sketchworks ABC's Adults Being Children runs November 8th, 9th, 15th, and 16th, and will totally seal the deal for you. <laughs> buy your tickets now at sketchworkscomedy.com or by scanning this code. This code right here. Now, if you really want your significant other to go all melty, learn how to do what we do. We wrapped up our intro to sketch writing class last night with a fun table read. And we just posted some new sketch comedy acting and writing classes. So check them out and sign up if you're interested. Sketch comedy writing classes are held over Zoom, so you can take them from anywhere. You can also join our Patreon, which may not get you laid, but it will get you some exclusive content and will help defray some of our costs each and every month, which some might say is even better than getting some action. 
Eh. Some. Might. Eh. And that's all for this particularly steamy, gratuitous plug segment. Monday, NASA launched a mission to the Jupiter moon Europa to learn if it could support life. The rocket will reach its destination in the year 2030, which raises the question, will there even be life on Earth at that time? Hmm. Very thought-provoking. The Jupiter moon Europa is a cold and frozen tundra which receives very little sunlight. Think Buffalo eight months out of the year. Former Abercrombie & Fitch CEO Mike Jeffries is under arrest in a sex trafficking investigation. Yes, this may be hard to believe, but the former CEO of the store that used shirtless young men as models is somehow suspected of sex trafficking. Five men who were wrongly accused of rape back in 1989, and known as the Central Park Five, are suing Donald Trump for defamation for comments Trump made during the presidential debate back in August. Also suing Trump for debate defamation, the dogs and the cats. A British woman who sued her former employer because she didn't get a farewell card lost her case because her co-workers did, in fact, get her a farewell card. Only three people bothered to sign it. The woman was also told she could not keep her red stapler as a goodbye gift. A rare copy of the U.S. Constitution that someone found in an old filing cabinet sold at auction for $9 million. Sounds like Nicolas Cage is on yet another crazy treasure hunt. Orkin has released their list of the 50 rattiest cities in America. And for the 10th year in a row, the rattiest city is... No, not New York, but Chicago. Sources say the rats prefer the Windy City because it's clean, it has a safe and reliable transit system, and of course, the shopping. And that's all for Sketchworks News Break. We'll be back next week, and we hope you are too. I'm Brian Troxell. Say hi to your mom for me. I'm going to buy her something real nice next time I'm over in Rat City. We have to tap into and, and, and rejoice, frankly, in the spirit of who we are as Americans. And we are an ambitious people. We have aspirations. We have dreams. We are optimistic by nature. And we, I think, value certain qualities in our leaders